الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الكریم اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم حدیث of the day day number 8 الحمد لله and today's hadith is really amazing it's going to be dealing with the topic of dream how many of us are you know are do see dreams and wonder where are the dreams coming from or why am i watching this dream go ahead and type one or the dreams don't bother you at all that's going to be number 2 <laughs> so inshallah today we are going to understand what these dreams are through the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi subhanallah right so it's something that we do daily we daily we sleep and at times we see the dreams and uh, you know it's so incredible when we come to the knowledge of quran and sunnah how everything starts making sense and how we can make sense of everything out there So let's start with the dua that Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizuqna attiba'ahu wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rizuqna ajtinaabahu O oh Allah show us the truth as truth and give us the ability to follow it and show us the falsehood as falsehood and give us the ability to avoid it Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen And when it comes to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Let's make a lot of salutations on him by saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid May Allah SWT accept uh, these the salutations. Give us the tawfiq to send as much through that we can on the Prophet SAW so that we can have our sins erased and our statuses can be increased, right? And the ultimate success package of living this life is when you accept that your creator is Allah SWT and your role model becomes Rasulullah SAW and Rasulullah SAW said, من أطاني بقل الجنة whoever follows me will enter جنة إن شاء الله so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us follow the Quran and Sunnah so that we can our way, our way to Jannah with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now coming to hadith number 8 let's, uh, let's get ready to say the hadith word by word and uh, you know let's see smiling and shining faces inshallah and definitely share it with your family as well so an abi qatadata an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala narrated by abu qatada radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace and blessings be upon him he said ar ru'ya ar ru'ya salihatu min allah A good dream that comes true is from Allah. وَالْحُلْمُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ And a bad dream is from shaytan. فَإِذَا حَلَمَ فَلْيَتَأَوَّذْ مِنْهُ So if anyone of you sees a bad dream, he should seek refuge with Allah from it. وَلْيَبْسُقْ أَنْ شِمَالِهِ And should make a spitting sound on the left. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَضُرَّهُ Then it will not harm him. SubhanAllah. Such an incredible hadith. I think um, you are not seeing a portion of the meaning. Let me see if I can adjust it. Uh, the, some of the translation is underneath for the bad dream will not harm him. And this is narrated in Bukhari. So, a ru'ya is a dream. And we will see that there are three kinds of dreams in this hadith. All right. Let's understand them one by one. Okay. So, the dreams that you are seeing the dreams that we see sometimes we think of something we want something and it goes in our subconscious um, maybe you want it to be um, you know you wanted a certain kind of thing or you wanted to eat certain kind of a thing or you wanted to be like certain thing do something and that goes into your subconscious and when you go to sleep that is what you see this number one kind is known as hadith nafs 
all right this is coming from your own soul these are called like nafsani like your own they're coming from your own soul all right and how to tell that these dreams are from oneself is like these are not that vivid you just don't remember every detail of it but you kind of vaguely remember when you get up that you were in sort doing something or let's say you liked a certain car and that car was showing in your dream or so it's not that vivid and um, it's usually um, very quickly kind of the effect washes away fades away right how many of us see dreams like that go ahead and type one if you have seen dreams uh, that you wake up and you realize oh i was somewhere doing something and uh, all of a sudden this is gone right um all right so in front of my eyes right so we're going to talk about that all the process anisha yes so this is nafsani dreams and they are not that vivid and what me and you need to do with that dream is just ignore it okay so you're just going to ignore it there's nothing uh, in it it's just uh, you know today we have so many scientists who have done research in that and we know that there's a subconscious area in our mind and brain and it gets an imprint and there's those things go in there and like you know you had an exam next morning and you were worrying about it and then you see yourself you know like an exam situation so things like that now the second type of dream is known as like the bad dream and is well hulm the hulm these are known as and also the last salam is telling us in this hadith that wal hulu min ash-shaytan bad dream is from shaytan these are the bad evil dreams you know you can write some examples if you have seen these these typically are from shaytan these terrify you you wake up you know terrified and you are like really scared and you wake up in the middle of the night and you are like uh what just happened so and this is basically coming from shaitan and shaitan is trying to play with us so you see yourself in an accident or you see yourself turn into something and um, you know you it's like oh you are going to you ha- you will have an accident in a car tomorrow and you wake up and you are so terrified and you're like oh I'm not going to drive tomorrow or oh, oh. so these these are shaitan trying to play with us and uh, these are coming from shaitan there is another category within this which are known as like the wet dream right and uh, this is like some kind of vulgar uh, dreams in which you find yourself doing something wrong and obviously you don't have any sin because of that because you do not have control on your dream but if in case of because of those uh, wet dreams you ha- you end up in a condition uh, with in which you have the wetness and you will wake up and you will take ghusl so when hulm have hulm happens that you're not going to tell others about that dream you're not going to tell people about it but if needed if there is like a bad dream then you will definitely take a ghusl after that that's the prescribed way from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so as regards to this dreams from the shaitan you know one time a, a person told us sallallahu alaihi wasallam that i saw my head cut into half and then it's like rolling like a ball and i'm chasing it and also as salam told him that do not tell it to people because it's like shaitan playing playing uh, you know with you so if the sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if any one of you has a bad dream you should not tell people about how satan played with him in his dream because it's as if that you are going to believe in it as i said like if you saw yourself oh i'm in, in a crash or accident and you wake up and you decide oh i'm not going to do this thing anymore because i saw myself in a dream and this severe crash was happening then shaitan is laughing at you because he made you believe in it and now he detract you from what you were about to do right so we are not going to pay attention to these we, like we are going not going to tell people about these dreams as the as the prophet sallallahu said and we should know that shaitan is trying to play with us so what we are going to do in that situation is we are going to make a sound like spitting on the left side when you wake up you are terrified and you are in the situation and you wake up and you realize that something really horrible was happening and you are like you know you are like sweating and you are like feeling really bad what you're going to do as per the son of the prophet sallam you are going to spit make a sound of a spit on your left side like and then you turn the position in which you were sleeping so if you were sleeping on the right side then you go ahead and flip yourself to the left side and if you were sleeping on the left side then you can flip on the right side even better if you can get up and make wudu and you know make some tura ka you can do that as well so that's what is the second kind of dreams which are from shaitan so the first ones are like nafsani dreams and the second one is shaitani dreams 
Yes, sister, you're very right. We always feel like the ne- nightmares will come to real. When I was little, I, you know, like there's a lot of dreams I would see and myself like, you know, like in, in form of things and shapes. And it was really, we really wake up, you know, like really scared as to what, what just happened or what did you just see? Even, you know, at times one of my children, they woke up and they're like, oh, somebody was hurting them or something was happening or your own love member trying to hurt them. And they woke up and they were like, you know, so hysteric about like what's happening. So these nightmares that we think that are going to come to real, it's basically shaitan trying to play with us. So inshallah, with this knowledge of this hadith, we are not going to uh, fall uh, as a prank in the hands of the shaitan. And we are going to learn how to take care of this by spitting on the left side and then saying, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan and then, uh, go, and then, you know, changing positions of uh, however you were sleeping, right? And if you are able to, then even better than you wake up, you get up and, you know, make wudu and you can offer salam. Of course, you can do that, right? Yes, so from now, this is what the hadith uh, that we got. We are getting the lesson that we are going to uh, follow what Rasulullah has prescribed for us. Right, Sister Rida, we are going to follow what Rasulullah prescribed to us. And that's saying, uh, if you notice the word here, it says, فَلْيَتَأَوَّلْ Right, let me bring it in front of you so you can focus on the word here. فَإِذَا حَلَمَ Then if any one of you sees a bad thing, فَلْيَتَأَوَّلْ this is nothing but the same word as ta'wul. And ta'wul is saying, A'udhu billahi min ash rajim Right? And then, you, what do you do? Well, yab sup. So you spit. You make a sound like spitting. An shimalihi. On your left. Fa innaha la tadur. Then it will not harm him. Right? So inshallah, we are not going to now give it more, mag- magnif- like magnify that further. And if we see a bad dream, then we are not going to tell people about how shaitan played with, with us in, in that dream, right? And we are not going to believe in that, inshallah. And that's, and we will know now precisely that this is film because I woke up terrified and scared and something really bad was happening, right? Uh, Alhamdulillah. Now let's look at the, the category number three, and that's the mubashirat, like ru'ya, all right? These are like the good visions, bashara, basharat. And Rasulullah told us that, you know, it's so incredible that Rasulullah told us that nothing of prophethood is left except dreams. And these dreams are 146 of prophethood. So these good dreams, the true good dreams are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah told us that true dreams are ru'ya min Allah. So the ru'ya, which is, you know, ru'ya al-saliha, which is like, Good dream. Saliha. Saliha means like righteous, good. They are from Min Allah. Al Ru'ya Saliha to Min Allah. That's the first part of the study. So number one thing that we get is that these are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright? And true believers are more likely to happen to those a uh, true believers are more likely to have these dreams because the Sallam said in other hadith in Bukhari that those of you with the truest dreams will be those who are most truthful in speech. And good dreams, if any one of you has a dream that he likes it, then it is from Allah. He should thank Allah for it and and he can share it with others whom he trusts, right? So um, it's really interesting and um, it's really interesting about uh, these good dreams that if Rasulullah said that if one sees a good dream, let him expect good and not tell it except to those he likes. All right. An example of this is Yaqub salam telling his son Yusuf salam concerning his dream about 11 stars and the sun and the moon prostrating to him. And, um, you know, he said, oh, my son, relate not your vision to your brothers, lest they arrange a plot against you. Verily, shaitan is to man an open enemy. And this is in the 12th chapter of the Quran, verse number five. So it's really, really important that when we see these good dreams, we don't just Go on and start to say, saying it to everybody because you don't want, uh, you know, somebody to be jealous about them. So, so you can, uh, you can share them with those who can trust, those who can, you can respect, uh, those who, who are people of knowledge because uh, it, it's really interesting how these dreams, knowledge and how the interpretation is of so much value. 
uh, and it's so it, it, it's a, it's a complete realm how we can do that. So even in this, um, uh, you know, like in another narration of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, nothing is left of Prophet would accept glad tidings like Mubashira, and those with him asked him, what are glad tidings? He Rasul ﷺ said, good dream, right? And even in this ru'ya, there are two kinds. One is that you get with symbolism, and one is that you do not have any symbolicness to it. For example, Rasulullah saw a dream that he is making tawaf around Kaaba and he told his companions in 6th Hijri that I see myself, you know, making tawaf, so let's go to Mecca. And when they, when they went, they were not able to go there that year, but the next year, the, the, uh, the Treaty of Arabia happened and those of you who martial arts are students, you can read then how the next year then they were able to go and do that. And then there are some good things that happen with symbolism, like, you know, like in the story uh, of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, where, where this, the, the person saw like, you know, fat cows and thin cows. Now, these symbolisms are very different in different cultures. So it's a very, very amazing science of how you're going to interpret the dream. If you have the good vision, one of the key things, how you're going to tell this ru'ya apart from your nafsani dreams, uh, your self-dream is that these dreams are going to be very vivid. And you will not wake up terrified. Okay? You will not... Um, okay, so you're not going to see yourself terrified. I don't know what this JD is, but um, you, you're not going to wake up terrified. You're going to feel happy about it. Like, you're going to be feeling nice about it. And these are going to be very vivid. So if you have, like, a good dream, you can share it with people whom you trust, people who have knowledge. Okay, the judgment day. I, I, I see. All right. And so basically you're gonna, you're gonna go to a local person who can understand that area, that culture. Like if you have a dream of certain symbols and things, then they can interpret. And it's a very careful science. The more I, you know, the more I'm researching on it, the more you realize how careful you need to be in terms of interpreting dreams. It's not something like, you know, I can just tell you, oh, this is how it is. And it, it's, we have to be very, very careful. But for ourselves, alhamdulillah, we get from this hadith about, there's some lessons to take away from these hadith, this amazing hadith about dreams is, number one, ignore the dreams from self. All right, so the nafsani dreams that you were sleeping and you just heard your alarm clock and you woke up and you realized you were in, you, you, you just, you were in a situation and something was happening in your dream. It was, you know, it was very blur and you don't have much vividity about it. Just ignore those dreams, right? And they, they are just your subconscious in there. Number two, the dreams that, you know, like they're like the evil dreams. You they, they woke you up like super terrified and now you're sweaty and you all have like a bad feeling about it. You saw some relatives dying or you saw yourself in crash or you saw something really bad happening. What, what's happening here? Go ahead and type the answers. What are you going to interpret after knowing this hadith? You saw yourself something really bad happening to you. Or you saw somebody else that you, your loved ones in a miserable situation and you woke up and you're so terrified. What are you going to do with those? Right? You're going to know that shaitan is making, is playing with us. Right? Ask for the hadith of Rasulullah Like this person who came to Rasulullah and he said that my head is split and it's rolling now. And he said, do not tell. Uh, so we, what we're going to do is we are not going to retell that evil dream. And in case it led us to a state of wetness, like in terms of wet dreams, then we will do, we will get up and we will perform wusa. And what do I, and what do we have to do for these evil dreams? Number one, you're going to spit on your left side. You're going to say, number two, you're going to say, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, and you spit on your left side. And, uh, and then you flip your position. If you were sleeping on the right, then you, you turn and sleep on the left side. And if you were sleeping on the left side, then you turn and sleep on the right side. And if it was too much for you to handle, then you can wake up and, like, you can get up and make wudu. That's also better and prescribed and you can pray also. All right. And the last one, the hul, then you, you can share the good dreams with trustable and knowledgeable people. Don't just go around and, you know, start telling, uh, everybody about it, uh, like many people say, oh, I saw a prophet in the dream and things like that. So don't just do that. Talk to somebody who is trustable and knowledgeable, and you can share that good dream with them. And these dreams are going to be very vivid, very vivid. 
subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the truthfulness, the level of truthfulness that we can see truthful dreams, inshallah. As we know that Rasulullah said, the, the truest of the people uh, is the dream. So they are very, very interesting questions when it comes to hadith, and this is a huge knowledge stream that we need to study about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. Um, and, um, you know, so what if you're not sitting on either side? Yes, uh, you know, that's why you should take a side as for the son of the Prophet. So if you're not sitting on any side, then go ahead and, you know, sleep on the correct sunnah uh, way. And then, you know, you can take on from there. Because obviously in your sleep, you can, you will change positions. So let's say this hadith, inshallah, one more time. I know this is a really amazing topic. The more even I research, I, you know, I'm like amazed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in our life that we can learn more and more, uh, you know, from the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah, in more details about this because there's so much which is out there, uh, in terms of dreams, uh, from the Prophet. And let's say this hadith one more time together. And inshallah, we'll look forward to, uh, hearing your recordings as well. Uh, عن أبي كتادة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الرؤيا الصالحة من الله والحلم من الشيطان فإذا حلم فليتأوذ منه وليبسق أن شماله فإنها لا تدره الحمد لله رب العالمين May Allah سبحانه وتعالى help us all inshallah benefit from this hadith help us learn them, help us live by them, act on them, inshallah, and then share it with others. A reminder for myself and all of us, وَالْعَصْرَ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْسَبْرِ By time, mankind is in loss, except for those who believed, who did the righteous deeds, who reminded each other of haq, and who reminded each other of sabr. Zakala khair. And inshallah, uh, the English translation is uh, there with the slide. So, uh, yes, the transliteration, I looked, sister, but I wasn't able to find the transliteration of the hadith. If anybody of you can even uh, see a link, then can definitely share. But um, the Eng English uh, transliteration, if you mean, I, I don't know what you mean the English recitation, but uh, definitely we can look into it. May Allah subhanahu wa give us the coffee. So, Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.